So Microsoft 365 Copilot is generally available if you're an enterprise customer and you are buying more than 300 licenses. This has caused a fair amount of expression of dissatisfaction out in the community this week. However, there are some tools that you can use right now that pretty much everyone can get access to. And so what we're going to do is go on a journey together to start using these AI tools in a business context. There's a lot of stuff out there around using AI to do some pretty fun stuff. We are still going to have fun here. But my mission in this video is to show you another tool that you can use right now securely with your business data for business use cases. And we're going to see how far we can go with that. Now, don't run away when I say this. We're going to have a look at Bing Chat Enterprise. No, no, really, don't. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Bing as a search engine is not something that I'm using every day. But Bing Chat Enterprise and what we've got here is essentially you're going to get ChatGPT4, the good one, DALI 3, new image generation model, in a way that is secure. So you can put your confidential business data in there and not put your organization or your work at risk. You with me? <laughs> Let's take a look at what this is and how you can use it. You'll need to be working in Microsoft Edge or Chrome. Other browsers aren't supported at this stage. I'm working in Edge. This is where I am all the time now. And if you go into this right hand side over here, you will see a Copilot panel pop up. Now, this allows you to do all of the sorts of things that we're going to talk about here. However, this is just the free public available version and it's not protected. If you're working on anything here, then your data is being shared out to the Internet, same as if you go to ChatGPT. And that's not what we want because we're focused here on how to do secure, safe business work. What you'll need to do is sign in in your browser with your work account. And if you've got one of these licenses here, then you will have this included. If you don't get this experience, give a shout out to your administrator and make sure that they enable this for your organization. So once you're signed in, I can click through here and now I've got Bing Chat Enterprise and you'll see there's a big difference here. The color is different. It's actually really calling out that this is the enterprise version and it's also telling you that your personal and company data are protected in the chat. So I want you to make sure that you've got that set up first so that we've got this secure access. And here's what we're going to work through. Firstly, we're going to do some productivity type things that could help me with my work during the day. We're going to have a look at doing some research that might be confidential in nature. I'm actually not going to do anything genuinely confidential here, obviously, but I'll simulate some things that give you the idea of how this works. And then what we're going to do is work with a document. So one of the highest value things that we can do with the Microsoft 365 Copilot, which we don't have, but we're not dwelling on it, <laughs> is to work across your documents. Now, this does not give you all of that, but you can bring a PDF document in here and you can work with things in the browser. So this is a lot more powerful than working just with ChatGPT4, where you've only got text, where it's not secure, where you don't have access to the internet. What we've got here is going to give you a whole lot more than that. So let's start off with some productivity type scenarios. So the first thing I'm going to do here is ask it to help me arrange a meeting. I am meeting with somebody who is in uh, Slovenia. I actually don't know what time zone that is. It's not an area that I've worked with before. So I'm going to say I am in Melbourne, Australia, and I need to set up a call with a customer in Slovenia. Please, please suggest some suitable times. Smiley face. It's very friendly, isn't it? <laughs> According to the time zone converter, here we go. Now, the other thing you'll find here is that as it comes up, we've got one of 30 responses. So as we work through the chat, it'll give you up to 30 turns in the conversation. So you can ask 30 questions. There is also a limit on this of 300 per day. So once you clear it, and I'll show you how to do that, then you can start another one and it will reset those 30 turns. It's a pretty decent allowance. I suspect if you're doing 300 times 30 in a day, then maybe you're not actually getting any work done or maybe you're getting all your work done and you can go ahead. All right, so here we go. Between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. in Melbourne, which is between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. There we go, that sounds, that sounds fine. Let's level up here though. Working with documents is one of the highest value things that we're all after with Microsoft 365 Copilot. The big difference here is that this doesn't have access to all of my documents. So the Microsoft 365 Copilot has access to all of my documents that are in the Microsoft Graph. It has access to working them through all of those Microsoft 365 applications. All I've got here is a browser 
but it's not just the browser. I've got the browser and anything I put in the browser. Now, if you're using Edge, Edge is also a PDF reader. So I've got a document here, which is a plan for Lisa's chocolates, some new artisanal handcrafted chocolates, just because, you know, I was feeling it. So this is a simulation here of something where this might be commercially confidential. Let's say that I really did have a chocolate company and I've got a plan for something that I'm planning to launch as a new product and I want to work with this document. Now, it won't work with a Word document or Word online, but it's very easy within Word to just go export as PDF. Little hack for you there. And then you can bring this PDF in here and now I can work with it. So the first thing we can do with this is to say, summarize this document. Now, the first thing, sorry, before I do that is that I'm going to actually reset the chat to sort of say, I'm starting again with a whole different topic. So if I click here, Nice, clean, sort of clear away the memory and let's start again, summarize this document. This will also work if you've got a web page open too. So if you're doing something where you're analyzing a competitor or looking at a report that's online, it will actually work in the context of what's in the browser. We'll have a look at that too as well. So here we go. This document is a product concept and marketing plan for my new chocolate line. This is just going to make me want to go away and eat chocolate. <laughs> Afterwards, I probably should have picked something that was a little less tempting. So there we go. We've got all of these things. So what I can do here is use this information to craft and create some content. So I might say here, uh, write me a LinkedIn post to promote the new brand. Now, this is where the more information we give it, the better. It should be no more than, let's say, 200 words and should not give away all the details. Focus on the gourmet bon bonds. Okay, good. Let's see how we go. So it should understand the idea of a LinkedIn post. It should be able to take all of that. It's going to go through and take this information here to create that. Are you ready to experience the ultimate chocolate indulgence? I'm liking this. <laughs> There we go. That's really good. Okay. How do you feel about that as a, as a LinkedIn post? I think that's actually a pretty good sort of, you know, thing here. The other thing you'll notice here is that we've got these references. So as we go through, and this is one of the things that's really good, and if you're using this with a web page as well, then you can come along and, and find these things. Let's have a look at who are the main competitors for this type of chocolate. So we've got access to the web here as well. So this is actually going to go out and find information on the web to do this, which is something that you can't do with ChatGPT so easily. Let's have a look at one of these websites here. So I should be able to have a look at this and see where this has come from. So this has now opened up that website for me. Let's go into the Cocoa Black website here and just have a look at some of the, the things that you can do in the context of the browser. And I'll show you how to set that up. So let's say, give me a list of all the recipes on this site, um, put them in a table name and a short description. So this thing where you can ask the chatbot to give you the output in a certain format is always something that's worth looking at. Let's see how we go here. While we're doing this, what you need to do to make sure that this part is working is that there's a setting. So if you do this and it's not connecting to the web page or it doesn't seem to be able to get to it, make sure that you have done the following permission. So we'll just do this while it's coming up with these things. You need to go in Edge into Settings. You'll see it keeps going on the side here. We've got your sidebar. And then in this app specific settings for Copilot here, you want to make sure that allow Microsoft to access page content is switched on. So just check that in your browser setting if you're not getting the desired result. So there we go. We've got our nice list of very tempting looking things. I can grab that and click copy and paste that straight into a Word document or whatever else I'm working with. I can also choose to export it, download it as a PDF or download it as text and off I go. All right, let's work with another example here. This is a government report. This is 264 pages long. 
there's a lot going on in here and you've just been handed this and you need to get across it and figure out what it means for your organization and do a presentation back. So how can we deal with this? You'll notice that we've got some different options here. So I'm going to stick with the more creative one, but you might want to play around with more balanced or more precise, depending on what it is that you want to do in terms of the conversational chat. I've had a play with it. I, maybe it's me. I like the creative one a fair bit better. So what we're going to do here is ask it, what are the key points of this document? And this is actually going to do a lot of work for me here is to go through and analyze this 264 pages worth of information around what's going on. So my starting point here is to summarize it. I've actually downloaded this as a PDF. If this was sitting in the web browser, this would also work. And what we can do then is start to feed it some context about the specific business or industry that we're in and see whether it can come up with some more specific recommendations. So it's going to go through and do all of that. What I'm going to do is just grab another prompt that I've written here to get a little bit ahead of it to say, here's a scenario that we want to be working with. So this is this is pretty good. I mean, honestly, compared to reading 264 pages, you'll notice when it comes up, we're also going to get those little footnotes in here as well that make it easy for us to see what's going on and where that came from. So I can click here and it's going to sort of show where all of that came from. Let's give it a bit of a context now. Your organisation is a book publishing company which publishes locally in Sydney, imports. This is how you sell. What action will you need to take? So what does that mean for us? And this is where this is important in terms of this being a secure session that you can put quite a bit of detail in here and use some of those skills to sort of prompt the chatbot to understand context and so on to be able to give you a more accurate answer. So it's going to give us some suggestions here about what that might mean for that specific industry. So this might affect the customer base, the types of books they're interested in, uh, what else have we got here? Implications for the business about our operations, something about skilling. Oh, here we go. So here are some specific actions that we may need to take. A skills audit and gap analysis, a digital strategy, yes. Review our market research and customer segmentation. Okay, great. So now what I have to do is prepare a presentation. So what I'm going to do is to say, let's come up with some content for a PowerPoint deck so that I don't have to do that work. I need to prepare a short presentation for the executive team. Please write up the headings and bullet points for a PowerPoint presentation, which is no longer than five slides. Let's see how we go with this. So as much as, you know, the, the big dream here of Microsoft Copilot is that I'm in PowerPoint and it's doing it for me, this can still do a lot of the legwork. I've got a 264 page document here. I've given it some context about the business and in a real world scenario, I'd probably given it a heap more than that. So now we've got the outline of the PowerPoint presentation and you could refine this as well to say, here we go. So there's the slide one is the introduction. So it's giving me the title, title purpose and key points, slide two, five objectives, five forces, 10 policy areas. It's not bad actually as a, as a structure of summarizing it. So again, play around with your prompting and see what you can get here. Let's also ask it if we can get a talk track because I'm going to not want to have to figure out what my words are there. So write a talk track for the speaker to introduce the topic to the group. I might want to say, write it in a tone that is friendly and reassuring for people so we can refine those things as well. This is pretty much just a fairly straight down the line. What are we going to do? We are going to write an email inviting people to the message. So now I've got all my content. Remember, you can just copy or you can download it. I can put all this into a PowerPoint document. I've got my talk track so we can write the talk track for each slide. How much time have I saved in my day so far here? We're going to just kind of hit stop responding on that and get on to the next one here. I'm giving it a little bit more this time. You're a middle level manager presenting on this report. Write the email invitation to the session. That's okay. That's a little bit wordy. So I'm going to say make it shorter. This is where it falls over a little bit. Rewrite the email and make it shorter. So you have to give it a little bit of context. I haven't, um, haven't, quite, <laughs> haven't quite got that one right. Let's see if it can handle that one much better. Here we go. That's much better. So the next thing we're going to do is to generate an image here. So generate an image to use on the first slide. Oops, first slidoey. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work out what that means. What we've also got in here in addition to this chat experience is access to the DALI 3 
image generation model. Now I have had a bit of a play with that. Don't worry when this comes up, this beautiful thing at first, this is just like the timer. You'll get a little sort of random arty message. That's not your actual image. I found it's better if you don't have images with people in them. We'll see what comes up here, but some of the images with people are kind of um, awkward and problematic, whereas these ones are quite good. Let's see what we've got here. So this is about sort of the future of work and jobs. That's not bad. The, the ones, as I said, the ones with people are problematic. Um, also the ones with text are problematic. So those people's faces are not looking so okay. Um, that one's quite a good image, but so you'll see it, it kind of messes around with the, the words in it. So again, yeah, not look, not not terrible. So you can use this to start to refine these things. And again, the image generation prompting is something that I'm really going to work on because I think that's something where you need to get much more precise with. So I hope that's giving you some reassurance. I am also going to do a tutorial here on how we can use Power Virtual Agents to upload a lot of documents and query over those or things on SharePoint. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think you will use here the most and stay the course with me until we can all get access to Microsoft 365 Copilot. Thanks for watching.